Hi, I'm Billy from Greenwood Solutions. Today's video presentation is on concentrated PV. After watching, you'll understand what concentrated PV is, what are the different reflection methods, what are the materials used in regards to the PV component, where are these systems located or the best locations, and the pros and cons compared to conventional photovoltaics. Please hit the subscription button and let's get stuck into it. One of the ways to increase the output from the photovoltaic system is to supply concentrated light onto the actual PV cells. And this can be done by using optical light collectors, such as lenses or mirrors. The CPV, concentrating photovoltaics, collects light from a larger area and concentrates it to a smaller area solar cell. In general, the CPV can be classified into low concentration, medium concentration, and of course, high concentration. Now, the levels of concentration are called suns. So if you've got two suns, three suns, 100 suns, that means the level of the sun's intensity has been multiplied by that factor. So 100 sun concentration is the level of intensity magnified 100 times. Concentrated technologies are either line or point and generally fall into the following categories. Fresnel lens, a parabolic uh, mirror, and reflectors. Now the Fresnel lens is named after the French physicist Fresnel, and it comprises sections with different angles reducing weight thickness in comparison to normal lens, and possible to achieve short focal lengths and large aperture while keeping the lens quite light. Uh, was traditionally used in lighthouses and currently also used in the headlamps of cars. So we're here in front of the board uh, and I've drawn uh, the most common of the concentration methods when we're talking about concentrated PV and that's the parabolic mirror. So effectively highly polished surface. We have a primary and then we have a secondary. So what happens, the sun is shining down in, in its infinite glory, etc., smiling away, and the rays of the sun are coming down, they're hitting this parabolic mirror, and then they're reflecting, because they're off the highly polished surface, to a secondary parabolic mirror that's smaller, and then, love that noise, it's powering down and hitting this very highly efficient solar cell. Now, the concentrations, depending on what level, are, called, are all called suns. So with the, the high grade um, multi-junction PN cells that are used, you can achieve any up to uh, 400 times. So that's effectively 400 times the intensity of the sun. Reflectors. This is for low concentration uh, PV modules and they use mirrors to concentrate sunlight onto a solar cell. And often these mirrors are manufactured with silicon covered metal. Uh, this technique lowers the reflection losses by effectively providing a second internal mirror. There are both low and higher efficiency CPV technology that may use silicon, and we all know about that for solar panels, cadmium telluride, Bit more exotic and copper indium gallium selenide cells hopefully I pronounced those correctly but the highest efficiencies can be achieved with multi-junction cells with multiple PN junctions made of different semiconducting materials each materials PN junction will provide electric current in response to different wavelengths of light which allow the absorbance of a broader range of wavelengths. So that this improves the cell's sunlight to electrical energy conversion efficiency. The CPV can only use direct beam radiation and cannot use diffuse radiation, in other words, diffuse from clouds and atmosphere. So these systems are really suited for areas with high direct normal irradiance. Think deserts. For proper light concentration, sun tracking is required to achieve high cell performance. And tracking is especially critical for high concentration systems. In other words, 
high concentration system, you've got to use tracking. The whole issue with concentrated PV is unlike your standard photovoltaics is it can't be used in a situation where the light is diffused. So the locations of these concentrated PVs are basically in areas that have at least 85 to 87 percent minimum direct irradiations. In other words, many, many bright sunny days without cloud cover. CPV systems produce increased temperatures on the surface of the PV material and energy should be distributed evenly over the cell area to avoid local overheating, in other words hot spots, which can damage the material. And the efficiency of the PV conversion is less at elevated temperatures. So some kind of cooling maybe or is beneficial and this can take the form of active or passive cooling. For the CPV cells with low and medium concentration ratios, active cooling is not necessary. Since the temperatures reached are moderate, the high concentration cells require high capacity heat sinks to avoid thermal destruction of the materials. Passive cooling. Um, in this case, the cell is placed on a cladded ceramic substrate with a high thermal conductivity and the ceramic also provides electrical isolation. In other words, it wicks away the heat passively. With active cooling, a, typically a liquid metal is used as a cooling fluid and is capable of cooling from 1,700 degrees centigrade down to 100 degrees centigrade, which is pretty impressive. So with these concentrated PV systems, because we're talking about direct radiation, we don't want diffuse light hitting the actual concentrator. And the higher the concentration, the more there is a requirement for tracking. So some systems have a single axis tracker, in other words, an east-west kind of system, and others have a two axis tracker, so they are tracking east-west and, and north-south. So they are constantly maintaining that focal point on the very, very high efficient um, PV material that's being used. Now here we have a table showing concentration um, levels and materials and whether they require cooling or tracking. So if you look at the second column, low concentration, you can see the concentration ratio is 2 to 10 and they're using silicon like with a standard panel. Cooling not required, neither is tracking. Now when we look at the third column, medium concentration, in other words the concentration ratio of 10 to 100, you're looking at different materials from silicon, you're looking at cadmium, telluride, uh, cooling is generally passive and tracking one axis, in other words, probably east to west tracking. Now in high concentration, you're looking uh, at a concentration ratio of 100 to 400 times. The PV ma material is the multi-junction material, uh, much more expensive. Cooling is active, we're talking about much higher temperatures. And you're talking uh, two axis tracking, east, west, north, south. This technology has these competitive advantages. It requires less PV material to capture the same sunlight as non-concentrating PV. It makes the use of expensive multi-junction cells viable due to smaller space requirements. Well, this is debatable. The optical systems comprised of standard materials so manufactured in proven processes. Thus is less dependent on the silicon supply chain. And moreover, optics are less expensive than the multi-junction cells. The advantage is it uses less PV material. Disadvantage, with concentrated sunlight formation of hot spots is possible. Advantage, increased efficiency. Disadvantage is tracking systems increase the complexity of the whole project. Advantages, higher productivity throughout the day due to tracking. But the disadvantage is you can only properly function under direct beam radiation. Concentrated PV is just another um, tool in the arsenal of someone who's looking to produce energy from the sun. Um, traditional PV at this point in time, ground mount systems seem to be the more cost effective way to go, but time will tell. Conclusion. Concentrated PV increases the amount of usable light hitting a PV cell. Depending on the level of concentration required, different cell materials are utilised. Concentration can be achieved by a variety of methods, Fresnel lens, parabolic mirrors or reflectors. 
and the best locations have a high level of direct irradiation for the majority of time. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on concentrated PV. If you have any inquiries, any questions, or any answers, please feel free to drop us a line. If you like what you saw, hit that subscription button and see you next time.